Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 113, and this is our first episode of 2020. Uh, it's a special one. We play poker in Texas, one of my absolute favorite places to play poker. And in this episode, you'll see why. Tons of big pots, lots of wild action. Uh, got a lot of fun things coming up, guys. Uh, we're doing our our first meetup game at the Gardens Casino in Los Angeles. That'll be January 10th and 11th, um, probably today or tomorrow for uh, some of you guys. So if you're in the area, come hang out with Andrew and myself. Then we're going to Asper's Casino, January 23rd through the 26th. That's gonna be awesome. I might go to Spain after that to play in the 888 live event. So that should be pretty cool. And then February 18th and 19th, we're going out to MGM Springfield in Massachusetts, and we're gonna be playing some cash games out there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. We're back in Houston for the last meetup game of 2019. We roll up to the Paramount Social Club. They've got it all here, including chess, pinball machines, pool, booze ball, meetup game fuel, and a big group of people who are about to get collectively wrecked. We're playing 1-3 tonight, but this isn't your average 1-3 game. This is Texas, Texas Hold'em. It's special. I buy in for 600, which is the max to start. Once the game begins, you can match the largest stack up to 1,000. I take my seat, and the very first hand of the session, I pick up pocket sevens in the hijack. Under the gun plus one opens to 15. Middle position player calls. I call. The big blind raises to 65. It's a small three bet, considering how many players are in the hand, and the fact that the three better is out of position. Under the gun plus one folds. The middle position player calls. I call for 50 more because it seems like a lot more fun than folding. We're going three ways to the flop. It's 975 rainbow. We've got middle set in position. This is usually a good situation to be in. The big blind checks. That's not what I wanted to see. The middle position player checks as well. Also not what I was hoping for. I make a small bet of 80 to induce a call or a shove. Both players fold. It's not too often that I make a set right off the bat. I go ahead and show. Later, I'm dealt pocket eights in middle position, under the gun limps in, under the gun plus one calls. I raise to 20. The cutoff calls. The limpers both call. We go four ways to the flop. It's 975 rainbow again. We have second pair with the gutter. It checks to me. I take a stab at it with my combo draw and bet 55. All three opponents fold. It's a good outcome. We win it. This one is a $10 double board bomb pot. We're dealt 10-7 offsuit under the gun plus two. The dealer puts out the first flop. It's 8-8 deuce with two hearts. Not a lot of help for us. The second flop is much better. It's 10-10-8 with two clubs. We have trips on the bottom. It checks to me, I bet 50. That doesn't get as many folds as I would have liked. The cutoff calls, the button calls, so does the small blind. There are four of us still in it. The first turn is the six of hearts. The flush draw gets there. It's not the worst card in the world because I pick up a gutter and a flush draw myself. The second turn is the three of spades. It's essentially a blank. The small blind checks, I bet 100. Cutoff calls again, the button folds, the small blind tosses in some calling chips, three of us see the river cards, the top one is the four of spades, the bottom one is another three, giving us a boat, small blind checks, neither of the opponents have much money left, I jam, thinking if I get called, I'm going to be chopping it, but maybe there's some chance I can get a better hand on the top four to fold. Cutoff calls for less, he has about 225 in his stack, small blind folds, I show the 10-7, hoping that I'm up against 10-3, 10-5, a flush, or an 8. Nope, the opponent has jack 10, he wins three fourths of the pot. He takes the first board outright, but luckily chopped the second. That's not a fun hand. After being up a few hundred initially, I'm now down a hundred on the night. The good news is that I switched tables where there are much larger stacks, so I'm able to add on to get my chip count up to a thousand. We play another double board bomb pot. This one's eight handed, and I pick up queen jack offsuit under the gun. The first flop is jack jack three rainbow. We have trips with a good kicker for a bomb pot. The second flop is ace nine six rainbow. Nothing on there except a backdoor straight draw. Small blind leads for 50. If he has a smaller jack, that'd be amazing. I raised to 125. The small blind calls the raise. We're heads up. The first turn is an ace. The second turn is a king, giving me a draw to the nuts. Small blind checks. It's tough for me to see how much he has left. I ask him to please stop Alec Torellying it. He's a good guy and moves his big chips out front. He has about 750 total. I'm looking to play for it all. I bet 300. Small blind announces that he's all in. I call. This has become a big pot quickly. I figure that I may be up against an ace and could be chopping. The first river is a good one. It's a queen, giving us a boat. The second river is a deuce. We only have queen high on that board. We're probably only getting half of this. The small blind jammed on me, so he has to show first. He turns over jack eight of spades. We have him beat on the top board and the bottom board. It's a similar situation as the previous hand where we lost three quarters with 10-7, except this time we win the whole thing and it's a much bigger pot. I added on at a great time to fully capitalize on a cooler situation. 
Next we're dealt pocket jiggities in the small blind. There's a button straddle. I'm first to act and raise to 20. The big blind calls, the button calls. Three of us see the flop. The dealer puts out 664 with two hearts. That isn't bad. I bet 30. Both opponents call. I'm a little concerned now. The turn is a seven. Some straights get there. I could also be up against a six or someone holding pocket sevens. There's no way for me to know for sure if I'm in the lead or not yet. I bet 75, planning to fold if I get raised. The big blind wants it to be more. He bumps it up to 225. That's not good. The button cold calls the raise. Things are getting worse. Cold calling raises signifies a ton of strength. There's very little chance that I'm ahead. I have no interest in getting jiggy with it anymore. I fold. The river is a three. Big blind bets 200. The button shoves for about 160 more. The big blind calls. The button wins it with pocket sevens. He turned a boat. The big blind shows that he flopped trip sixes, then tosses his cards into the muck. Both players had monsters. It's double board bomb pot time again. We look down and see pocket deuces in the hijack. The dealer puts out jack 10 7 rainbow on the first board. That's an ugly one for us. The second board is 8 4 deuce, giving us bottom set. Checks to me, I bet 75. Small blind calls, giving himself an opportunity to lose lots of money on the vlog. Everyone else folds, it's heads up. The first turn is a king. It's gonna be tough for me to get anything going on that board. The second turn is a six. Some weird straights get there. Seven five is the only new holding that beats me on both boards though. And since I didn't get raised on the flop, I should be ahead on one board at least. The opponent has around 460 in front of him. I have him covered. My plan is to jam and to put the opponent to the test. Maybe I can get him to fold a chop. Something strange happens, the small blind leads for 100. This could actually work out even better, allowing me to get an extra 100 that I wouldn't have gotten if he had checked. I stick with my plan and I rip it. The player eventually calls and slides in all of his ships into the middle. In my mind, we're likely gonna be splitting it. I turn over the set of deuces. The opponent turns over ace eight. He has a double gutter on the top board and top top on the bottom board. It's a really good situation to be in. I'm pre-rolling and at least half of this pot is guaranteed to be coming my way. I just need to fade all the nines, queens, and aces left in the deck on the top board. We already see the first river and it's a face card. You can probably guess what it is since I run about as bad as possible in double board bomb pots. Just kidding, I run great. It's a king. The second river gives my opponent two pair. He was drawing dead there though. We somehow managed to scoop another all in on a double board bomb pot with almost nothing on one of the runouts. This is turning into quite the session. I'm up about 1200. I'm not even close to being finished. I'm dealt king queen offsuit under the gun plus two. And I raised the 15. The small blind calls. The big blind calls as well. Three of us see the flop. It's king eight four rainbow. We have top pair with a good kicker. Both opponents check. I bet 20. That gets rid of no one. The small blind and big blind both call. The turn is the deuce of spades. There are two spades out there. The opponents check. I bet 50. The small blind folds. The big blind calls. We're heads up. The river is the four of spades. The backdoor flush gets there. I could potentially be up against trip fours as well. I plan to check back. Never mind. I won't have that opportunity. The big blind leads for 100. Looks like he wants to get called. I don't know where I'm at. I just can't fold. After hearing he has a king, I turn over my cards first, since I have the second best king, and I figured that I would have gotten three bet preflop if he had ace king. The opponent sees I have the best hand and he mucks. It's not a huge pot. It's nice that these type of hands are now going my way, whereas several months earlier, I was on the opposite end a lot of the time. It appears that things have turned around. Next we get into another interesting situation with ace king offsuit on the button. Middle position player limps in for three. The hijack raises to 23. I hadn't seen this particular player raise once pre-flop. He's doing it here. It's nearly eight big blinds after someone has limped in. He's setting off alarm bells. Against someone else, I three bet. In this instance, I flat. The limper folds, it's heads up. The flop comes ace eight six with two clubs. It's a dream flop. You have top pair, top kicker, and a backdoor flush draw. The hijack checks. I'm almost certainly in the lead. You probably only get two streets of value at most from a hand like queens or jacks. There are very few turns that I won't like. For that reason, I check back purely for deception. The turn is the queen of spades. This is perhaps the worst card in the deck. Of the hands that I think my opponent could potentially have, I'm currently losing to ace, queen, and queens with a tiny chance I'm up against ace as well. I probably can't get paid by anything worse than what I have. What makes the situation even more scary is that the opponent leads for 25. I don't see any reason to raise. I call. The river is the six of clubs. The ace and king of clubs are accounted for. Never thought I had to be worried about the club draw getting there. The opponent bets 40 though. I call. The player has pocket kings. That's about the only hand that we could beat. Our read preflop was correct that the player was very strong. Free three bet and got it all in with him. And we would have won a big one. Can't dwell on that too much since it would have meant getting it in bad. We take a different approach and probably win close to the maximum with the line that we took post flop. 
The last table of the night, I'm dealt ace, queen, and diamonds, under the gun, plus one, under the gun limps in, I raised to 15. Under the gun, plus two calls, the small blind calls, and the limper calls as well. We go four ways to the flop, comes 10, five, four with two diamonds. We have the nut flush draw, two overs, and a backdoor straight draw. The small blind and under the gun players both check. If this were heads up, then I'd bet it. Since we're multi-way, I go ahead and check. It's tough to get through three players on a board that typically isn't gonna connect well with my under the gun plus one pre-flop raising range. Also, this check is a bit for deception. My opponents may not expect me to check the nut flush draw, so if I hit, it could be easier for me to get called lighter down the road. Under the gun plus two checks back. The turn is a queen. We improved the top pair and top kicker. Small blind checks. Under the gun bet 16. This is obviously very small. I doubt that he would have bet that amount on a draw heavy board with multiple opponents if he had a hand that was stronger than mine. I put in a raise to 50. Under the gun plus two folds. The small blind calls. This is interesting. He probably has some sort of draw himself. The action's back on the under the gun player. He jams for 245 total. My initial read on the situation was that under the gun couldn't have been that strong once he bet 16. I'm still not totally convinced that he is. Either way, I've got a lot going for my hand if for some reason I'm not already best. I'm certainly going to stick around. There's no need for me to re-raise to isolate. I call the 245, hoping the small blind may call as well with a worse flush draw. The small blind deliberates for a bit, then eventually puts in calling chips. Him and I will be heads up for a potential side pot. It'd be great to hit a diamond here on the river. And we absolutely drill it. The dealer puts out the jack of diamonds, giving us the nuts. It's already a large pot, but it could get much bigger if the small blind happened to have hit a flush too. Please pull the trigger and rip it. I can tell he's thinking about it. He finally comes to a decision. Okay. All up. All. Nice. I don't think that I've ever gotten my chips in faster. I flipped over my cards immediately, so I never saw what the small blind had, but he'd later tell me it was Jack-9 offsuit and that he was attempting to turn his river pair into a bluff. That's a big mistake since there was a third player who was already all in. That means the small blind was attempting a bluff to win a dry side pot. You never want to do that since you still have to show down your hand and win against a third player to take down the main pot, which is the only pot with money in it. We capitalize on an extremely fortunate string of events. We're up 2700 tonight. It's by far the most that I've ever been up in 1-3 before. If you thought that last hand was wild, this one's even crazier. We've got King Jack offsuit in the big blind. Five players limp in. I check. Six of us see the flop. It's 10-9-4 with two diamonds. We have a gutter with two overs. Small blind checks. I check. Under the gun checks. Middle position player bets 10. Cut off folds, the button and small blind call. I figure it's only $10. I call as well. The under the gun player calls. Five of us see the turn. It's the queen of hearts. We have the nuts again in a multi-way pot. Small blind checks. I check. This time under the gun bets 25. The middle position player folds. The button calls. The small blind folds. It's on me. I raise to 100. Under the gun calls. He has a second largest stack at the table with 2,200 left. I have him covered. The button folds. We're heads up. There are a ton of cards that I don't want to see, including any heart. Diamond, King, Queen, Jack, 10, 9, 8, or 4. Somehow we fade all of them. The river is the five of spades. We still have the best possible hand. The question now is how can we make the most money? I get tricky and I bet 100 again. I want my opponent to think that this is a blocker bet. If he has something strong, then he'll raise for value. If he has something weak, like a missed draw, then he may see this as an opportunity to steal the pot by coming over the top and raising. I don't expect my opponent to flat very often. The player seemingly takes the bait and raises to 325. It's a really fun spot to be in when you've got the nuts and your opponent is raising you on the river. He didn't re-raise me on the turn. For that reason, it's tough to imagine that we're chopping. Maybe he has a set or jack eight for a lower straight and can call a re-raise. I make it 800. Under the gun announces that he's all in for 2200 total. I call. Turns out we are chopping. He has king jack as well. Not the ideal outcome. Still gets the blood flowing when you play a pot that's almost $5,000 in a 1-3 game. That wraps it up. We end the session shortly after. Awesome session, it was another fun one. I was in that big downswing for a while and I'm coming out of it now. I've had uh, some big wins lately and it's been cool to catch them on the vlog. I won 26-20 tonight over about nine hours of playing. Uh, it's almost 900 big blinds, so you can't really win that much unless, you know, things are going your way and you're getting good cards. So that's certainly what happened. And I've uh, just been having fun playing. It's, it's nice when Things are finally going my way, um, especially on video, because it, it was not fun to share like a bunch of losses uh, when I was playing, you know, in the last couple months, uh, you know, in October and September, I think. Yeah, so I'm really, really glad to be coming out of that. Gonna enjoy a beer and call it a night. 
That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Big thanks goes out to the Paramount Social Club for allowing us to host out there. Thanks to everybody who came out. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on putting out a video at some point going over my stats for 2019. It was a rough year, probably my worst or second worst year playing poker um, professionally. A lot of a lot of factors went into it being that way, but uh, probably the biggest one being that uh, traveling a lot, never really being on a routine, and just I had my biggest downswing of all time in cash. So uh, <clears throat> not fun, but as you saw in this video. Uh, I was coming out of it towards the end. I actually finished the year really strong, which was great. I needed it. Um, anyway, uh, a lot of stuff coming up, guys. I mentioned all the meetup game things that are going on um, the first couple weeks of this year. So if you want more information, I have uh, that down below in the description box. Hope you're all doing well. Good luck at the tables in 2020, and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, this is cool. It is all engineered.